In this video, we'll discuss problem number five from the 2021 AP Stats Free Response Set. Problem number five is a problem that kind of has some parts rooted in probability and then another part that's rooted in inference. So this doesn't have one theme, uh, kind of switches midway through the problem, but the situation that we're presented with here says that a research center conducts a survey about teenage behavior. Teens were asked whether they had consumed a soft drink within the past week. Following table shows the counts for three independent random samples from major cities. So we've got the three cities represented across the top as categories. And then we've got the responses of yes, they have consumed a soft drink within the past week or no, they have not represented in the left hand column. So you might remember calling these values in the middle joint frequencies because they join a category that's listed across the top with a category that's listed down the side. Uh, and then in the outside margin, we call these the marginal frequencies or the totals for the columns and the rows. So joints as the ones that join categories together and then the marginals around the outside margin of the two-way table. But if you look at part A, suppose one teen is randomly selected from the city sample, from each city sample, excuse me. A researcher claims that the likelihood of selecting a teen from Baltimore who consumed a soft drink in the past week is less than the likelihood of selecting a teen from either of the other cities that consumed a soft drink within the past week because Baltimore has the least number of teens who consumed a soft drink. Is the researcher's claim correct? Explain your answer. Well, obviously, the number of teens from Baltimore who answered yes is smaller than the number of teens from Detroit or San Diego that answered yes, they have consumed a soft drink within the past week. But look at the total number of people that were sampled from Baltimore. It is by far the smallest of the samples for any of the three cities. So I think what makes sense to do here is a few conditional probability calculations. What's the probability that the person answers yes given that they're from Baltimore? 727 out of the 904 people from Baltimore answered yes We've got an 80% likelihood of, of having the person selected from Baltimore answer yes. We've got a similar calculation done for Detroit and San Diego. We see smaller conditional probabilities for the person having consumed a soft drink within the past week from those cities. So is the researcher's claim correct? Definitely not. The, the person from Baltimore is most likely to have consumed a soft drink within the past week than any of the three cities. So we've got the probability calculations backing up the conclusion that we listed down here at the bottom of the screen. Part B is, is really just an extension of part A. It says consider the same values in the table, construct a segmented bar chart for the relative frequencies based on the information in the table. So we've already done the calculations that we have that we would have needed to do to construct this. Uh, out of the 100% of the teens from Baltimore, what portion answered yes? Well, it was just over 0.8, right? That 0.804 from back in part A. So I have my, my divider drawn here as close as I can get it to 0.804. And then I do have a key. So where I've highlighted, that represents the proportion that answered yes. And where I haven't highlighted, that represents the proportion that answered no. I did similar things for the bar for Detroit and San Diego. So we had roughly 0.75. I think it was a little lower than 0.75 as the proportion from Detroit back in part A. And I believe it was exactly 0.65 as the proportion from San Diego that had answered yes. So the segmented bar graph should be pretty easy to draw. And then we've got a follow-up question. Which city had the smallest proportion of teens who consumed a soft drink within the previous week? Determine the value of the proportion. Well, obviously, we, we could have answered this without having the segmented bar chart drawn. We could have answered this back here. San Diego clearly has the smallest proportion of teens that have consumed a soft drink within the past week. Visually, that's obvious from the segmented bar chart as well. So San Diego is the answer to part two of part B. And it does ask you to determine the value of the proportion. Well, we already determined that, that back in part A. We just have to transfer that calculation forward here to part two of part B. Last part of this question goes to another unit of the AP Stats curriculum. So we, we were already in two different units, and now we're in a third in part C. Consider the inference procedure that is appropriate for investigating whether there is a difference. 
among the three cities in the proportion of all teens who consumed a soft drink within the past week. Hopefully that phrase, whether there is a difference, triggers that you're going to have to use the chi-square test for homogeneity to try to determine whether there is. So the inference procedure is the chi-square test for homogeneity. Identify the hypotheses of the test. Now there's not really much flexibility in the hypotheses of the chi-square test for homogeneity. Uh, and I guess before we even say what the hypotheses are, why is it homogeneity? Well, if something is homogeneous, there is no difference. If something is not homogeneous, there is a difference, right? So we're trying to judge whether or not there is a difference. So when you are running the chi-square test for homogeneity, the null hypothesis is always going to be that there is homogeneity across the three populations, in this case for the three cities. Uh, with the proportion that would have answered yes, that they have consumed a soft drink within the past week. Now, I've obviously put a lot of detail into this hypothesis. I've done this within context. Definitely something that has to happen within AP Stats FRQs. Now, what would the alternative hypothesis be? Well, the opposite of there being no difference is that there is a difference. So if we were to actually run this test, and, and this is the last part of this problem, so you weren't actually asked to run the chi-square test for homogeneity, you were just to identify that that's the test that would be needed to be used, and then to recognize what the null and alternative hypotheses for that test would be. But if you were asked to run the test, you'd be looking to reject the null to claim that yes, there is a difference among the three cities in the proportion of teens that have consumed a soft drink within the past week.